Rock stars, welcome to the guitar show. It is January the 21st. So glad that you guys are here. It's the new and improved guitar show. That's right. It's shorter and we have segments. You know what segments are. Little pieces of orange or pieces of a show. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get to questions at the end, near the end, but we have segments, which basically just little, little things that you can hang on to. Make the show a lot more fun, right? All right, so first off, a check-in. And I saw some naughty kids just now in the chat talking about the stupidest thing in the world, which is politics. You ain't in politics, I ain't in politics, you don't even know what's going on in politics, so uh, sorry to be honest, but don't speak politics please in the chat. You will get booted, I promise. It's just a, a hard, fast rule that I have. Um, don't talk about stuff that no one really cares about, because there's like two people in the chat that would actually care about that, and it's the two people arguing, so don't do it. Be a good boy, be a good girl, don't do it. We're here to talk about guitars, we're here to have fun, okay? Otherwise, Facebook is the place you wanna be if you wanna get immersed in all that. Cool? Okay. All right, um, that's about as harsh as I get <clears throat> right now. All right, so let's check in, friends. We got four questions that I like to ask at the beginning of these just to see where you guys are at with things because this helps me. Boy, it's getting warm in here now. Is it me? No, it's cold still? Okay. It is, okay. Uh, someone could kick it down a little. I'm literally sweating now. Um, okay, so check in. Here we go, four questions. Number one, how much have you practiced this week? Number two, what skills are you currently working on? Number three, what are you drawing inspiration from this week? And number four, what are your short-term goals? I don't ask these questions to just get people talking because you guys are talking plenty yourselves. Well, the reason I'm asking these questions are, are several reasons. Number one, it lets me know where it is that you're at. It also gives me information to help you with lessons and that sort of thing. And then also, it truly will help with inspiration with other people because when you're saying, hey, I'm struggling with this, and somebody else says, hey, I'm struggling with that too, then they don't feel like the only guy or gal in the world who's struggling with this. And the truth is, no matter what you're struggling with, whether it's guitar or anything in life, you're not the only person going through it. I think you're special, but you're not that special that you're the only person going through this. Chances are other people are going through it as well. So just remember that, and it's very helpful with whatever it is you're going through. Cool? All right. So, be, uh, if you would, put those into the, um, into the chat, and then I'll check those out. And in fact, I didn't even bring my chat up here, so. And would you, uh, on my computer, bring up the chat? I've, I've been sitting here goofing off, and um, yeah, and it may be bonkers, so. It's all sorts of crazy here. So, here, I'll tell you what, I'll get it, I'll get it going here. Because um, my computer is kind of like, a landmine a little bit in that if you put your cursor in the wrong place it goes crazy and everybody here curses me at the studio so hang in there with me for just a moment I'm gonna pull up your questions here uh, so yeah so what these questions do friends is they help me to to get a pulse of what's going on with you guys okay all right pulling it up right now there's 112 in you in here that's because cool my computer is kind of like shush your hole shush it shush it Okay. All right, Coolio, got the chat right there. Right there, right there. Uh. Okay, and then I'll be looking at that on occasion throughout the broadcast. Now here's the deal, I'm not gonna get to the questions until near the end, right? But we will get to some questions right now, which are the top three social questions of the week. Well, Eric, where did you pick these questions? From social media, right? So you know where I'm getting these from. You know how to work the interwebs probably better than I do. So here you go, here's the first question. This is from JJB23MJ. You know him well. What settings, bass, mid, and treble should I put on my MXR distortion pedal to get that authentic 80s sound? Now sometimes I pick a question because I think it's gonna benefit everybody else. For JJB 23 MG here, MJ here, sorry. Um, it's really important that I had your question on here, not so much that I'm gonna be able to answer this question because nobody can truthfully answer this question without knowing a lot of other variables. What kind of guitar you're playing, what songs are you playing, what cabinet are you running through, what amps. So there's all these other variables, but that's the whole point why I chose your question is because a lot of folks are out there and they'll 
they'll go to the internet and they'll say, what's the best blank? Or what's, what's the best setting for an MXR distortion to get that 80 sound or whatever? And so, MJ, this question is gonna help everybody else, not so much you. Well, it'll help you a little bit in that there is no setting that I or anybody else could say honestly that's gonna get you that 80 sound because there's, there's many other variables that would factor into this, okay? But that's where the lesson is, is that folks out there that are like, show me how to get that sound. They see uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan playing 12s on his strat, that's strings, right? The high E string starting at a 12. And I know he runs through a tube screamer, so I should, if I do that, I'm gonna get that sound. Truth be told, if you were to have all of his equipment, unless you knew his licks and you were able to play like him, it's still not gonna sound like him. Yes, it's gonna get you closer, right? But what I'm telling you here, MJ, is, um, you know, go with what your ear tells you is right. Okay, now I can tell you for that 80 sound, if you're talking about like kind of that he heavy metal 80 sound, what you want to do is you want to get uh, like a plexi or a Marshall, some, some sort of Marshall, preferably a tube amp, a plexi is, is going to really give you that sound. And that's very expensive. That's probably not what you're looking for. You're probably looking for specific settings on your on your. $100 MXR distortion pedal that's gonna get you that same sound. And obviously, uh, if it was that easy, then everybody would just go out and get the MXR distortion, but alas, it's not. So we have to buy things like plexis and greenback speakers and all the things that those guys used back in the day in order to get that sound. Does that make sense? So not to discourage you, but just to give you a little bit of latitude, a little bit of uh, liberty here to understand that there's a lots of stuff um, Oh, sweet. We got Robert Baker in the chat here, which, um, which if you don't know Robert Baker, he's a beast on the guitar. When I grow up, I want to play like Robert Baker. He's uh, an amazing shredder. Check him out. If you, don't, if, if you haven't already, you're missing out because he's amazing. Um, oh, sweet. And he's going to be in, in Nashville hopefully next month. And Robert, please be on the guitar show because, number one, I love you. And I'm sure, I'm sure I've got a lot of... Uh, students here that would love to have you on as well. So look me up then, brother, and let's let's do it. Uh, beautiful. Thank you for for popping in there, bud. Okay, does that make sense then? As far as the tone, it, it I tell you what. There's a great website, and I forgot the name of it. But if you just were to type, um, it's God. What was it? Let me think for a second here. Basically, if you were to say Google search Stevie Ray Vaughan gear then one of the, something that's gonna appear on that front page is something about like artist gear. And I forget, I go to the website all the time, but I don't go to it directly. So I find it and then I'm like, oh, there it is again. Uh, but basically what they do is they break down what a specific artist uses for a particular album or a particular tour or these years, you know, Angus Young used this kind of wireless device with this kind of, Marshall amp and this kind of guitar and this kind of wire, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can really break down it and understand that. Okay, cool. Awesome. Great question. Sorry for the long windedness there, but uh, honestly, that information is going to help a lot of folks because, and they're trying to get these sounds. They're wondering why when they dial their amp like Joe Bob on YouTube and they're wondering why they're not getting the same sound. It's because there's many other variables and also how are you playing? Cool. Awesome. All right. Next question is from Motown Mystery, and this is, what are the characteristics that are found in good blues guitar, such as technique and effects? That's a fantastic question, and since I love blues guitar so much, I, I wanted to answer this one. So, blues is really scaled down, okay? What I mean by that is, this is a good blues tone right here. Basically, just a Strat. In this case here, I'm in the fourth position, not really. This is a 65 Strat and they only have three positions, but essentially it's in the what would be the fourth position, so in between uh, three and five, that's where four usually is. And so it's right there in the middle. And so it's a great, just great place to start from the guitar standpoint. And then not a lot of overdrive. If you notice, I don't have this sound. I would if I was playing some heavy metal, but Alas, I'm not, so that's the sound we're going for. And 
basically what that is is your amp, your settings, your own settings, with just a little bit of breakup. And what I mean by that is if I play lightly here, I get a nice clean sound. If I dig in, you can, you can hear just a little bit of hair on that sound. And it's just a little bit on this one. I might even have a little bit more in there, like. See, in that way, I can control how I want the note to sing. So if I want it to just be real light, or if I really want it to, if I want it to sing out a little bit more or get angry, then you're, if you're set up, and I say set up very lightly because everybody's different. Whatever your setup is, you want your amp or your distortion pedal, whatever you're using, to be just at the point where it's breaking up when you dig into the strings, and then it's cleaner when you're not doing that. So that's what you would want to do as far as effects, and also a little bit of reverb. Hear that? You know, we're not throwing a bunch of effects on it. There's no delay. No one's really doing that in blues. It's just going to take away from such an authentic, rootsy type of, of sound, okay? So that's that as far as effect. As far as technique, you're using lots of bends. You're using lots of vibrato, so... double stops, two notes at a time. I cover that in UGS a lot. Uh, what else? You're, see, and I say lots of vibrato and lots of bends. If you were playing jazz, you're not hardly bending at all. You're not bending at all. And vibrato is, you just don't hear vibrato in jazz. So those two things are very common in blues. You're using the, the blues scale a lot, right? You know that one? Extended. Okay, uh, blues scale in all the different forms. I've got tons of videos for that. If you're in UGS, I got a whole blues section. If you're on YouTube, just search your Guitar Stage Blues and you'll find that, or blues scale. Um, you need to know the 12 bar blues, which is a 12 measure chord progression. I won't go into all that because I have videos for that and I'd have to spend 10 minutes with you here just for it to make sense. So I've got videos for you regarding that. Just search Your Guitar Stage 12 Bar Blues and you'll find out what, you're, what I'm talking about there. Uh, so get used to using the blues scale over a 12 bar blues and you're going to be, you could spend years doing that, getting good at that, honestly. Start there. Get really good at that, okay? Now I had to answer this one for my daughter. Wow, it's Frau. Uh, what was the first guitar you played? So wow, it's Rao. Uh, the first guitar I played is a Barclay one-string guitar. I call it, I say it's a one-string guitar because it only had one string. Obviously, it wasn't uh, meant for one string. It was meant for six, but it only had one at the time. And I just literally pecked through any melody that came to my ears, anything from classical to rock or whatever. Was, uh, you know, of course, Smoke on the Water and all those. And uh, my mom's friend saw me doing this and was a banjo player and got me my first actual guitar which was a student nylon string guitar it was really small maybe about like that big and i don't have that anymore i don't know where that's at that's sad but i don't have that but i had six strings and i bought a tablature book and i started learning how to play or at least learning how to play other people's songs it was awesome i loved it uh really that those memories stick with me pretty strongly still. So that was my first guitar. Keith Richards fanboy, and by the way, check out Wow It's Frout. She's a great, uh, great multi-instrumentalist, songwriter, singer, etc. She's my daughter, and I'm very proud of her. And uh, she plays out in Nashville here, and she's awesome, you know? Um, okay, now, fanboy. Or Keith Richards fanboy is saying, who is your main inspiration for guitar? And that's a great question. Here's the deal. It's changed so many times over the years that it doesn't matter. Uh, 
But since you asked, I'll tell you. Uh, so it, when I started off, it was guys like Randy Rhodes, Eddie Van Halen, uh, Ingve Malmsteen, the guys from Iron Maiden, the guys from Judas Priest. I was a metalhead for sure. Um, and that's what inspired me in my angry youth uh, with my little leather uh, wristband with the spikes that I had to cover up because I went to Catholic school. Um, so yeah, I was into all that. That's, and honestly, classical music was also very inspirational to me as a kid. Um, I, but I loved all different types of music. So uh, my inspiration is all over the place. And these days, it changes from month to month. It's just like, oh, that, ins that inspires me. This guy inspires me. This gal inspires me. So I, I've been listening to a lot of Chili Peppers lately. Again, I've gone through many Chili Pepper phases. And John Fushante is an absolute beast. In fact, I found the whole Stadium Arcadium. Uh, this is on YouTube, by the way. The whole Stadium Arcadium record with nothing but the guitar. They took all the instruments out of it and you can only hear the guitar and it is absolutely mind blowing. Uh, just raw, but just so well thought out and well arranged and everything else. It's, it's fantastic. Coolio, all right. Now, um, friends, by the way, we added a whole bunch of stuff to the kit store this week. If you don't know what the kit store is, it's if you go to, is it, is it kit.co slash your guitar sage? Yes. Okay. If you go to kit, K I T, dot C O slash your guitar sage, super easy to remember, I have a kit store, which is basically the equipment that I recommend either that I'm using here in the studio for myself or some lower priced equipment for folks that are starting off. Maybe they need a a great strat, but they don't want to spend $15,000 on a strat. Maybe they want to spend 150. dollars Then that guitar is in the store for you, you know? So basically what it is is those, you know, there's beginner stuff and then there's the stuff that I'm using, which is a little bit more expensive or a lot bit more expensive. Uh, those are in the kit store, so check that out. And I think we have a link for that in the description of this video, pretty sure. If not, yeah, no? Yes. yes. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Sweet. All right. Um, I'm going to, before I do some shout outs here, I'm just going to look through the questions. Is that cool, guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm just going to look through the questions here and I just want to see where you guys are at. Let's do our little ch our check in here. Okay. Um, okay. No politics. Brazil Griller. Thank you, Brazil Griller. 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 Griller, not gorilla. That'd be fine too, though. Um, yes, no politics, please, dear Lord. This is an escape from politics, indeed. Shame for shame. All right. And I'm only looking for those with questions, okay? Or, I'm sorry, with, with a question mark, all caps, okay? Otherwise, I'm probably going to skip you just because there's so many here and I want to make sure. Um, but I guess the, these would be statements, so I need to be looking out for that, okay? Forget what I just said. And I won't get into any questions quite yet, okay? And Jerry, you know how much I love you, Jerry Mars. We all care about politics. We honestly do. It's not that we don't care about it. It's that bitching about it, or let's say talking about it, not you, you're not a bitcher, Jerry, I know, I know you and I love you. Talking about it on the internet does zero. You know this to be true, and I'm not talking to you, Jerry, I'm talking to everybody. Everybody knows this to be true. It's just that we get triggered and we wanna say something, whether you're on the left or the right, it doesn't matter, everybody's right on their side, right? The left think they're right and the right think they're right, and everybody talks about it as if they're right, and we get nowhere except we, we, uh, drop friends on Facebook and everything else. And let's not do that here, right? This is about love and this is about guitar and it's about expanding our consciousness and all that stuff through music and through everything else that we're learning here. So love, okay? Um, I get it, I get why, but there's places for that. Um, so yes, you are somebody, Jerry, and we love you, seriously. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me see if I can get some check-ins here. 
Okay, so Donnie Miggs has been working on E Lydian and E Mixolydian, trying to get my looper pedal more involved with jamming. Beautiful. So friends, if you're not, if you don't have a, a, a looper pedal, go get a friggin' looper pedal. I've said it a million times. Now it's God talking through me to tell you to go get a looper pedal. Go get one. It, you will not be sorry. Okay, you can do all sorts of amazing things with it. You can arrange, you can work on your scales, you can work on your solos, you can work on all those parts that you would normally have to have a person playing there with you. You could do that with the looper pedal. They're super cheap. I just gave away nine yesterday. Uh, they're, they're all over the place, okay? Get one. At least get like a $100 ditto pedal. Ditto, D-I-T-T-O made by TC Electronic. Just get something. Uh, and then work on your stuff like Donnie is doing here. He's playing Lydian and Mixolydian. Those are modes, what we call the Greek modes, and they're basically a derivative of the major scale. That's all they are. If you don't know this about modes, don't let that word overwhelm you. You're like, I don't know about modes. Oh, they freak me out. If you know the major scale, you know all the modes in all the keys. Yep, it's true. The major scale goes like this. That's the major scale. It's also known as the Ionian mode. So look at you, big pants. You're already playing modes. You're playing the Ionian mode. I didn't know that, Eric. Yeah. You're playing the major scale, also known as the Ionian mode. If you're playing the minor scale, you're playing the Aeolian mode. Look at you. Just look at you. I'm so proud of you. So if you, if you go from one to one, that's major or, or Ionian. The Dorian would be the second scale step. Lydian, Mixolydian, and so on. Locrian. Uh, all. So basically, if you play a major scale and you play it from one to one, it's going to be major. If you play it from seven to seven, it'll be Locrian. If you play it from six to six, it'll be Aeolian. If you play it from two to two, it'll be Aeolian. Three to three, Lydian. Four to four, Mixolydian. Is that right? No. Dorian. Um, but nonetheless, we're, we're real close there. Um, I cover those modes extensively inside of my course. And some folks are better at using these than others. By the way, we have a Super Chat, Alex uh, Gaithier. Alex, thank you so much. So appreciate that. I'm taking the crew out, which by the way, our crew is growing here. We now have uh, four of us here, and then I've got Jason in Florida, and I've got a couple folks in the Philippines that help us out with support and that sort of thing. So uh, at least the folks here in, in, in Nashville, we're going out to lunch today. And Alex, thank you so much. Truly appreciate that. Alex just donated 20 bucks, folks. If you'd like to know how to do that, because I know you're just chomping at the bit to send money. Uh, at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, next to a little smiley face, you'll see a money sign. And if you click that, it's super easy. I don't know how to do it, but people do it all the time. So it must be pretty easy, you know? Okay, cool. Um, no, Jerry's not leaving. She's, a, she, she's like our mascot. She's not going anywhere. She might, she might be mad at me today, but we love her. She'll be back. Come on, Jerry, don't go nowhere. All right, so what else? Um, jamming some Stevie Ray, all right. Trying to work out melodies, I hear onto the chords that fit. Okay, so basically this is improvisation, listening to the chords and then playing some sort of melody over the top. Oh, I know, Eric, but I, I, really, wanted, I really wanna play solos. I really wanna play solos. Well, if you're playing melodies, you're playing solos, okay? You're, you're, you're coming up with phrasing. That's how it starts. Okay. Ha <laughs> Pixies. I love the Pixies. Wasn't Eric's wife in the Pixies? I wish. That would be cool. Um, I love my wife, but it'd be even cooler if she was in the Pixies because I love that band or wrote some songs for them. No, she didn't. If you're talking about that killer band from, from the 80s and 90s, um, no, she didn't write anything for them. Black Francis wrote everything for them, I'm pretty sure, but they're awesome. But, I'm, but she did have a pixie cut. Erica, maybe that's what you're getting confused with. <laughs> uh, so JR is working on improv melodies over chord changes, but maybe uh, got maybe five hours in last week trying to get some 
some time in, still setting up my new music room in my new house. Beautiful. So I talk about this all the time. When you're practicing, if you don't have a lot of time to practice, focus on one thing. And you know what I mean by not a lot of time to practice. You'll feel it. You'll be like, God, I want to practice more. Focus on one thing and get and just go down that rabbit hole and get really good at that. If you practice a lot of different things, you're never going to get beyond that just basic level of those things. You have to deep dive. And the way to do that is to say, I'm going to work on bar chords today. I've got a half hour. That's all I'm going to work on. You'll get it, okay? I promise you. There's a lot of magic in that type of thinking, uh, in, type of, in that type of focus, okay? Okay. And Jack Ryder, I do see your question. I'm going to get to more of these check-ins first, and then we'll and then we'll proceed, okay? Okay, let me do one more, and then we're going to, um, and then we'll go to our shout-outs today, okay? Practice is normally one hour of 365 and one hour of chord changes working to be fast. Dwight, who won a Les Paul for me, I believe Dwight won the Les Paul uh, a couple months ago. Dwight, we see him in here a lot. Welcome, Dwight. Uh, practice is normally one hour in 365. That's the 365 guitar plan he's talking about. Uh, that you can check out for free, and one hour of chord changes. Beautiful. Okay, awesome. We're going to get to some more of these because I want to hear what it is that you guys are talking about, but let's get to shout-outs, okay? And the shout-outs this week are, uh, I have a gear shout-out, and then I also have a player shout-out, okay? Now, for this shout-out, uh, it's on, it's basically gear and let me get my screen set up here the right way for you. I purposely picked a song here that I'm not going to get copyright struck on because it's my song. And um, all right, let's, uh, if we can guys, can you, do we have the ability to bring them to see my screen or no? We do. We do. Hey, look, look at how good these kids are, huh? Look at there. All right, so this is the deal. This is called DJ Pro. On the iPad, it's called DJ2, like numeral 2. D-J-A-Y, numeral 2. D-J-A-Y, numeral 2. Or in this case here, D-J-A-Y Pro. That's for the computer. I don't know if they make this for PC. I know for sure they make it for Mac, and I know they make it for iOS devices. But this is really cool because, uh, so this is a song that I wrote. This is off, uh, well, do I have sound? Here we go, yeah. Oh, I need to do something here real quick, otherwise I'm gonna get my audio coming through here, so. No, I won't, okay. Okay, so here's the deal. So you can see this is my, my song playing up here, right? Well, what this allows me to do is loop, slow down, speed up, change the pitch of any song that's on Spotify or in your iTunes or if you have like a local library, you know, like on your computer. So for instance, this particular song, if I wanted to play over the top of this, I could loop a little section of it. So here we go, watch this. In, out. So now I have that little section there looped. So I can like literally loop over the top of this or, or noodle over the top of this while it's playing. Pretty cool, right? So literally that, that loop right there, let's see, one, two, one, two, three. So we got a four, a four bar loop there and I can noodle till my heart's content. Now what's cool about this is I can also slow it down.
without changing the pitch. Or let's say I wanted to change the pitch, I can click this little button here and say I wanted to play this in a different key, I just do this. That sort of thing. Or I think, oh, I can do it right here. There is a way to do it. I've done it before. Forget it. I don't know what I'm doing right now. But nonetheless, there's a way to change the pitch as well, not just with this knob over here, but there, there is a way to do it. I swear there is. Oh, I know how to do it. Here we go. What? Yeah, now how cool is that? All right, we're done with that one. All right, so is that... How cool is that? Why is that cool? Because I could take a Zeppelin tune or anything and I could put it in whatever key that I want to that I want to play in. I could slow it down, I could speed it up, and here I am jamming with all those great tracks that I grew up listening to. Super, super cool. Way cheaper than a looper pedal, but it's doing the same job and you don't have to create the loops, but get that looper pedal too. It's in the kit store, okay? Cool. This is DJ uh, DJ Pro is the name of that one. Cool. All right, that's our first shout out. Our second shout out is going to a guitar player who, if you don't know this guy already, you need to. Here we go. Check him out. This is Kingfish. that. He just knows that one lick, but can he play it pretty good, right? No, that guy is amazing. It's Kingfish. He's actually going to be in Nashville on the 31st at 3rd and Lindsley. I just uh, found that out yesterday, but uh, amazing player with such feel. I believe he won something at Guitar Center, like maybe King of the Blues or something, which I entered years ago, and uh, <laughs> didn't play anything like that guy. Uh, pretty amazing. So check out Kingfish online. Uh, he has a real name. It's something Kingfish something or another, but um, amazing player. Cool. All right. Good. All right. So let's get, let's go. I'm going to check back in with you guys here and we'll get to the tip of the week here in just a minute. So Michael's playing daily electric, acoustic, finger style, 60s, 80s rock. That's all my stuff that I love, chord progressions, variations. Um, yeah. Beautiful. All right. Uh, let's see. Daily exercises here. Might be hammer-ons. They might be modes. They might be stretching your fret hand more. It gets harder each week. Oh, okay, so Alex is talking about 365. Gotcha. Uh, some days practice very little. Other days, like Sunday, watch football and practice, then practice some more. About eight hours. Love days like that. Right. And so Brazil Griller was probably watching TV and playing guitar at the same time, which some people say, don't do that. That's ridiculous. That's totally fine. You can do that. You're not going to break anything. And in fact, if your fingers are moving on the fretboard, it's going to be better than when they're not moving. Okay. So I'll do that all the time. Um, I do that sometimes when we have meetings, I'll be uh, fully engaged and playing at the same time just to keep my fingers moving because if you could imagine, which it's probably hard to imagine, you probably think I play guitar all the time. I don't play guitar very much <laughs> these days and I need to be playing more, but alas, I'm making videos, I'm doing live programs, I'm producing courses and um, managing folks in the whole nine yards. So I don't get to practice as much. So any amount of time that I could be practicing is good. And if you're doing it while you're watching football, then great. Obviously, you're just doing stuff like this, which is just keeping your, your fingers engaged. But 
uh, it's not like you're getting to deep dive and you're in, you know, doing improvisation and that sort of thing and, and really figuring problems out because you can't do that when you're watching a football game. But you can keep your fingers moving and that's good too. You gotta do that, you gotta do both, right? Cool, all right. All right, working with my ditto, I have a walking bass line and a scratch in it, but having trouble getting rhythm chords to match. Okay, yeah. So a great way, Michael, is to start with your chords and then create that, that walking bass line. But here's the deal. Usually your chords are gonna change every four beats or so, but usually a you know, stock chord progression is gonna change every four beats. So what you wanna do is whatever bass line you're hitting on the one of your, of your walking bass line, then chances are that's gonna be at least the bass note of the chord that you're gonna be working with, okay? So if you're like. So we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So if that changes there, that was a a D, then that D7 chord works well over it. That's just an example. That's, you know, blues. Okay. Oh, someone's asking, oh, thrash metal. The name of the, my wife's band, well, we had a project together that was called Kirby and the Roaches. I know, it's a weird name. But we had this dog that lived a really, 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 really long time, like 17 or 18 years. And, uh, and she was the sweetest dog and her name was Kirby. And my wife, you know, said one time, she goes, that dog is gonna live forever. You know, that could be a nuclear ho holocaust and the only thing that would be left is Kirby and the Roaches. And I was like, oh, that's a great name for a punk band. And we were actually looking for a name for a project that we were working on. She goes, let's name our project that. And I said, that's cool, that's weird. Let's do it. We're not gonna do anything with it, so that's perfect. Uh, yeah. So, but Kirby and the Roaches is the name of that. All right, all right. Okay, two, Dorian, Phrygian. That's the one I was, I was, that's the one I missed. Yes, okay, so Ionian. One, one to one is Ionian, okay, or major. Two is Dorian. Three is Phrygian. Four. Lydian, Mixolydian is five. And people use Mixolydian a lot in blues because of that, that flatted seven, okay? And then uh, six is Aeolian. Locrian is seven. And major or Ionian is one. Thank you, my knees hurt. Thank you for telling your guitar teacher what the modes were. Um, <laughs> It's true, but, but here, there's a, there's a lesson from that as well. I talk about this all the time. Me, personally, and most rock blues players aren't like, God, I need to know the modes, and I need, to know them. I need to know them all the time and over every chord. It's like it doesn't work like that. If you're playing rock and blues, which are really the, the styles that I stick to, I'm not much of a jazz guy, not because I don't like it. I like it, but um, I didn't learn it when I was young, and I'm learning a little bit more now these days. Uh, especially like swing, I love swing. Um, but it's an investment in time, just like anything else. So if you're playing rock, if you're playing blues, you really don't, it, it's helpful to know the modes. You can add some different colors and stuff, but just knowing the modes is not gonna get you there. It's a start, but if you watch um, some players that I have on here, like uh, most, most Nashville players do it a lot, and what I mean by Nashville players, I don't mean me, I mean Nashville players that are in the studio a lot, playing live a lot, I'm just not these days anymore. But like, if you take Corey or RJ, you know, Corey Congilio, RJ Ronquillo, um, other buddies like that that I've had on here, like those guys will do it a lot, they'll stick to the blues scale, but then you'll hear them throw in some, um, some modal stuff, okay, cool. All right, let's get to our tip of the week. All right, here we go, tip of the week. So, tip of the week is this. If you, you know, have lots of questions about strings, and I say it all the time, they say, what's the best string? There is no best. There's no best, okay, there's just not. And I say that a lot on things because I want you to get that in your head. There's no best, there's what's best for you. So, but something I will tell you that I've discovered over the years is that 
having the right string gauge according to how much you play and how hard you play and all the rest is really, really important. Here's the deal. For fenders, because it's a longer scale, nines are what I like best. And those are probably a perfect gauge for you as well. You could do eights if you want, to, if you want them to be even slinkier, but you can overbend on eights. You can overbend on nines, but nonetheless, nines are like right in the, in the sweet spot, in my opinion. You have eights, you have tens, you got nines, they're in the middle, and they work great for fenders, basically, because they have a longer scale length. Remember that the longer, uh, the bigger an object is, like a whale, it's gonna have a deeper tone, and the smaller an object is, like a chipmunk, that's why they always talk up here, right? You know, when they talk. So, the smaller a body is, the higher the pitch is, okay? So, there you go. You wanna make sure that uh, your fenders have nines on them, if that's the, the one that is that works for you, or tens, I put tens on my Gibsons because they have a shorter scale length, and they, uh, that's why you can put a thicker string on it and still get the same pitch, okay? Obviously you have to tune them, but uh, tens on my Gibsons, nines on my Fenders, try it. I promise you that you're gonna have a good feel across both guitars, all right? Excellent. Okay, let's get to some questions. I told you I was gonna get to some questions. I know, right? Here we go. And I'm gonna be starting, actually, I'll tell you what, for folks that have put questions in here earlier, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to those first, okay? All right, and please, all caps and with a question mark, that'd be helpful, that's what we do. All right. Hey Eric, I'm getting a Taylor GS Mini tomorrow. Any tips on trying my guitar training, including the bass, on tying my guitar, on tying my guitar training, including the bass. Russell, I wish I knew what that meant, I'm sorry. Hi Eric, I'm getting a Taylor GS Mini, which I have one of those, those are cool, tomorrow. Any tips on tying my guitar training? Don't know what that means, including the bass. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means, Russell. Um, if you have another way of saying that, let me know, because I don't, I'm not sure what that. What are the essential music theories that I need? I'm now playing for years and I know nothing about theory. Jack, start with the beginner course inside of UGS. If you're not in there already, we'll post a link for free access. It's yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Not only do I teach the essentials of playing in there, I also talk, talk about the theory essentials. And basically I'm starting you off with just the stuff you got to know. I mean, you could not play guitar at all and you should know these theory bits. Okay, not really. But if you're a, a musician who's a beginner, you got to know these, especially the, the guitar ones that I'm showing you in that free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. The link for that is right there uh, or it's in the description of the video. Go there, Jack, and go through that. I promise you, you're going to have a great foundation then. That's what you want to know. Okay. Get it? Okay. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, I just got your UGS Pro. Maybe a silly question, but where do I start? Keep the light on. Start at the welcome video. Okay? Start at the welcome video um, because that's a great place to start. Okay, and then you would start at video one and then video two. So it's not, it's not a dumb question, it's not a silly question, but it's, um, it's a question. Start at the welcome video and then go to lesson one, okay? Uh, I say that because even folks who've been playing for a long time say, where do I start? Start there, okay? Friends, we have a super chat, by the way, and I've just employed two new people here, right? So, you know what that means. It means we need to eat some Indian food today. So, any help, you know what to do. Bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see a little uh, money sign there. If you donate, then you'll be donating to our lunch fund today. And here you go. Blessings. They're coming to you. You know who you are. All right, here we go. So, best options for dirty, edgy sound that isn't muddy. Best options. There is no best, Mark. There 
I would be a liar, and any guitar player would be a liar if they answered that question for you, saying best options for a dirty, edgy sound that isn't muddy. I have 20 different ways in this room alone on how to get that sound with using various pedals and amps and stuff like that. So get a, get a good overdrive pedal. That's where to start. Okay, there is no pro I don't know what guitar you're playing through. I don't know what kind of amp you're playing through. So um, I'm, not, I'm not being dismissive. I just, it really, I'm, I'm being honest. I could just throw something out there and pretend to help you out, but that would, that'd be being insincere. There's many different ways to do it, okay? Okay. I love lamp. Here we go. Um, Robert, what, uh, okay. Okay, yes. So Guitar Head Man is saying, can you offer insight into how major and minor pentatonic shapes overlay and how to utilize it? Yeah, let's talk about it real quick. So I'll start with something kind of bluesy here, right? This time I'll play it right, okay? Now, I'm just gonna play that one chord. I'm not gonna play the whole chord progression, but uh, nonetheless, this is basically based upon an A major chord, and actually an A7 chord, also known as an A dominant seventh chord, which is basically an A major chord with a flat seven up top. Okay. Extend. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, look. Look, friends. Hippie Geek Book donated $21 to the fund today. Hippie Geek Book, thank you so much. Mm, virtual hug, buddy. Get in here. Get in here. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. That's awesome. So sweet and so kind of you. By the way, if you ever want your question answered above everybody else, um, then please uh, use the super chat and that will literally get my attention. I'll stop whatever I'm doing and get to your, your bit there. Also, uh, Dragos Pipas uh, donated $10 and I missed that one earlier. I'm so sorry. Dragos Pipas, all that. Thank you so much, you rule. Uh, really appreciate that. So, so this is an A major chord, also known as A dominant seventh, has that flat seven in there. So, but nonetheless, it's major, okay? If some of this is going over your head, it's okay. I didn't know this when I was an infant. And if you are just coming to music, or even if you've been playing it a long time and you've never been shown, then you're an infant in that understanding. It's okay, everybody is. You gotta learn one day. So don't beat yourself up, just learn this stuff. Start with the free program I'm giving you because that's gonna cover lots of the basics, okay? So you gotta have a major chord, or this is a major chord here. So a lot of people will play minor blues over it. Shouldn't work. I mean, literally it shouldn't work because the minor doesn't sound good over the major, but it does in blues, which gives blues its sound. But major blues for sure should work. So check this out. So here's minor blues. If I just play through the scale. minor blues, I could also play major blues, and the way I would do that is I'd take that same exact scale, move it down to where instead of my first finger being on the A, the pinky's on the A, and then it's gonna sound a little different though. different way of playing you have to you have to know where your tonal center is. Woo! Woo! Yeah, what's that? What's going on there? 
20 bucks, Thomas, bro. And he's got some cool, fun little emoji happening on the screen. Gosh, I wish you could see this because that, that's making my day right there. Beautiful, Thomas, thank you, bud. Man, we've got, we've got some lunch fun today, friends, for our Indian eatings. Good, thank you so much. Um, okay, does that make sense? So here's the deal, just take the scale and move it. So if you're playing an A, it needs to be like blues chord progression for you to be going back and forth between major and minor for the most part. Um, start with blues. So if it's A, then you're using A minor pentatonic or minor blues. And if you want to play major blues, then put your pinky where the A is instead of the first finger and play the same form of the scale. Cool? Good. All right, beautiful. Guitar Head Man. It's a cool name. How much time, how much practice time I give to my guitar, please explain to me. By the way, love you, sir. Thank you, Kara, uh, Carrie. How good do you want to be? That's my question to you. If you are totally cool with being mediocre, then practice a medium amount. If you're, if, you're, if you're totally content with sucking, then don't practice that much. But if you want to burn the guitar, if you want to be amazing at the guitar, then spend more time doing that, okay? So try not to think about, well, how much time do I need to practice? Don't think about it that way. What you want to do is you want to think, how much time can I get on that guitar? Those guitar players who are really good, they're not thinking about how much time do I have to practice. They're like, how can I stop what I'm doing now and have my hands on a guitar? Because they're obsessed with it. That's the way you want to get. If you're not that way, it's okay. But I guess what I'm saying is that's not going to come natural to you then, that you're going to pick up the guitar for hours at a time, you know? I want to match chords to songs on church at live, can you give practice tips? Judson, yes, you've gotta understand the basics of music. So there's no one tip that anybody could give you that's gonna make you go, oh, okay. Uh, you have to understand the mechanics of music, the basics of music, and I teach that in the free course. That's why I kinda hand that out as a business card, because for you guys who need help, I can literally say, here's the link, now go and eat and have fun and dig in and you're gonna learn all this stuff. Uh, otherwise, I could sit with you for a half hour and try to, to, to find out where you're at and try to get you to understand this, but it's not gonna happen without you understanding and building a good foundation. Does that make sense? Okay. Anybody telling you anything otherwise, it's, it's not true. You gotta understand the stuff, you know? Any chance Danny Gatton's version of Harlem Nocturne being one you teach? I'm slogging through, no, I haven't, I haven't taught that one, Ted. But Danny Gatton is a freak of nature. He's so good. All right, how do you play classical guitar? You buy a classical guitar, you learn a classical piece. You learn something very simple, okay? That's how you play it. You need to learn how to, the basics of finger picking, which I cover in the free course. Start there, because you don't necessarily need a classical guitar, although if you're really intent on playing classical guitar, yes, you need a, a nylon string guitar because that's the sound and there's many reasons that you would want to do that. But if you want to understand the basics of finger picking, get inside the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. That will help you to understand this whole bit, okay? Okay, should I learn the melody before chords and strumming? Uh, there's no specific way. You can do either, you know? All right, we got about five minutes left. I'm going to bump up to the top of the chat here because for folks that are just putting stuff in now, uh, Guitar Head Man, thank you, brother. Thanks for being the sage. Thank you so much for that super kind donation to the lunch fund today. So appreciate it. Okay, you rule. Have you told these guys how great this course is in 52 weeks and what you have given this 72-year-old his life's dream of playing guitar? Thank you very much and God bless you. Yay, Thomas, thank you so much for letting us know that. And yes, we see these comments pour in every single day. I say every single day, every single like half hour. Like literally, there's so many comments like the years that come in um, that it's gonna come off braggy if we share it all the time. But thank you for prompting me to, to, um, to show that to folks because that is awesome. Guitar Head Man, UGS changed my life, my musical life. Thank you so much. Those testimonials help me and they help other people too because if they get on here and they're like, I don't know this guy even knows how to play guitar or teach guitar or anything, I don't know. It's like, 
We've got testimonials and they work too. So they let folks know. So you're helping other people by doing that. Thank you. What song is a good example of a secondary? Oh, folks do get to see what Thomas put up there with that fun little dude. That's awesome. That's so cool. Uh, what song is a good example of secondary of a secondary dominant chord? What is a good song example of a second? Oh, wait, never mind. Wait. Okay, then I guess Joel found out what he's talking about. And honestly, off the top of my head, I couldn't even tell you. Um, Dragos Pipos, keep up the good work in UGS. Thank you, buddy. So kind. Okay, A minor pentatonic, do positions one through five correspond to chords. A minor key, example, second position, no. Okay, Brazil Griller, no. This is, this is for a lot of folks out there who, because I know that I get this question a lot, and this is great. So just like we played through the scale, right? Right, we, we play through all these different forms. I'm just playing one to one, two to two, three to three, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it, does, it has nothing to do with where you're at uh, in, in, as far as the chords. So for instance, if I have this blues, this blues chord playing, I can play, right? Or I could play, different position. So it has nothing to do with the different chords. It has to do with just here's another place where the same notes appear. And the same notes appear all over the fretboard, all over whatever instrument you're playing. It's just seven notes for the most part. If you're playing pentatonic, it's only five notes. But you get the idea, right? It's like literally the same notes, but just starting in different places. That's what's going on there. And that's with all different positions, okay? We got about two minutes here, friends, and we're gonna get to your other questions. Uh, this has been a great show, and you guys have had some great questions, so amazing. Okay. What gauge do I use on my Line 6 Variac? So you know I gave the line six very acts that you guys always see, I gave that away in a giveaway that we did here uh, maybe a year ago or so. So I don't have that one anymore. I have another line six very acts, and uh, I think there are probably tens on those. Yeah. When using alternate picking and when just picking down. So, you know, usually if you can play it with down, down strokes, then do it. Alternate picking is usually when you're doing like some sort of, you know, uh, tremolo picking, you know, where you're like that sort of thing. You wouldn't want to try to do that with with one pick because that's not gonna that's not gonna work for you. Okay, uh, you're playing just, you know, you know, write some Metallica. Sounds great on the Strat, doesn't it? No. Uh, but these are all downstrokes. It would sound weird if it were... I don't know. I'm not, I can't even do it. It's an insult to, to thrash. You can't do that. It's all downstrokes. So if you want that nice chuggy type sound, downstrokes. But when you're playing single notes, usually you're going to do alternate picking. Here's the deal. Don't think about it. If you have to play fast, you're automatically going to alternate pick, okay? All right, let's get to one last question, and then we're done for this one today. You guys have been amazing today, and honestly, thank you so much for the donations. It really means a lot to me. It really does, and it means a lot to, to our crew here um, because now we can have more than just an appetizer. Normally, we just split an appetizer, the, the four of us, but today we'll all actually be able to eat. So thank you so much. Um, how did you improve your singing? Okay, it's a great question. And if you, if you think my singing sucks now, you should have heard me 
way back. No, uh, so I can sing okay, but how did I improve my singing? I improved my singing by singing more, just like you would playing guitar. I did take some, some lessons, but honestly, those lessons are gonna be, uh, you know, I would say to take lessons if you're singing a lot on your own and you're watching YouTube videos and you're, you're, you're really digging in the dirt and getting better at, at singing and you're doing lots of singing. Uh, vocal lessons are great because they will teach you things about your voice. It's a little bit harder to see than it is on the guitar because I can move your finger to see say, look what you're doing there, you're muting that string with your, with your finger. But with the voice, it's all happening in here and you can't see it, so you're just going on feeling and sensation. They use a lot of analogies. Uh, I'd be great for that job, but they, because I use so many analogies, but um, you know, they're always like, okay, can you feel your this doing that? And nonetheless, that's what vocal lessons are for, is that they help you to understand uh, parts of your anatomy, these parts of your anatomy, your dirty little minds, this part of your anatomy uh, in order so that you can sing better, okay? Number one, I took some lessons. Also, I just sang a lot more and I started wanting to, to sing better. So that helped me to appreciate and to, to hear things and go, God, I wanna sound like that. Or, How's he doing that? How's she doing that? I wanna learn how to do that. And so for those of you, I know lots of people out there who are listening to me right now are saying, you can't improve your singing voice. I was born with this singing voice and I suck. I can't sing. You know, I know, and you're probably not talking in that voice, but you're, you're saying that in your head. Here's the deal. You're absolutely 100% and completely wrong. I still love you, but this is not a matter of opinion. The voice is developed. How do I know this? Because number one, I've sat in on lessons. I've watched people develop their voices. And for the same reason that my little kid, right, my, my four-year-old in the beginning could not speak words, now he can speak words. And you're like, yeah, well, that's talking. The, talking is singing. Singing right now, I'm singing. I'm just not holding the notes out as long as I would as if I were singing, because if I did that, then it would sound something like this. And that's the only difference, is that when you're singing, you hold notes out longer. But if you can speak, you can sing. You're not tone deaf, okay? So you can hear pitch and you can speak, you can sing. Then it's just a matter of developing that instrument. It's like an instrument just like anything else and you have to learn about it. You definitely aren't gonna do it by just trying. I mean, it'll help, but you gotta learn some stuff. Cool? All right. Some great questions here today, uh, folks. This has been a great show. So appreciate all the questions. So appreciate you guys sticking around here. Uh, the donations, beautiful. You guys rule. Thanks for hanging. Um, you know, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those places where the kids hang out and we're doing different stuff there, especially in 2020. We're doing all sorts of different stuff there. So if you haven't already, you'll want to join up there. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, basically, twitter.com slash your guitar sage, facebook.com slash your guitar sage, et cetera, et cetera. That's how you can find me, okay? Share this video with a friend. You know how to do that in all the ways that you can do that. Uh, so many great, amazing things coming up. The Robbie Calvo course is coming up. If you're in UGS, be looking out for that. We'll announce that. Um, there'll also be a way for you to buy that in other ways. If you're not within UGS, that'll be on Udemy. So be looking out for that. We have the RJ Ronquilio slide licks course coming out in, um, that's going to also be on Udemy. If you're in UGS already, it's in there. Mm, what other things? Joe Robinson is going to be here. That's right, he's coming up. Uh, I think February 18th we said, right? Yeah, do we have anybody next week? Not yet. Not yet. We've got our feelers out though. So we have, we have somebody who we would like to have on. Okay, okay and other stuff, but that's it for right now. What, a last minute donation? Is that right? Yep. Look at that, I, I can't see it on my screen. Let me see, oh yeah I can, hold on, here we go. J, is it JT? Mm -hmm. JT, beautiful. All right, my friends that's it. Um, JT, really quick, I'm gonna answer your question last here. Can you give you some tips for, for pulling off? Yes, do it, okay, no joke. Like it's just a matter of practice. Um, but here are the tips. So start with your first and second finger, right? Because you're gonna have a better idea of what's going on there than you would your third and fourth finger, okay? So here we are, one and two. So here I'm picking two, and I'm pulling off one. You wanna make sure that you hear it. It's helpful if you do it on electric. Uh, start with fingers one and two. You want to act as if you're 
plucking the string. How do I do that? I'm literally getting that string to sit in my calluses there, like in a groove, and I'm pulling it down while this finger's staying put. It, you gotta get used to it. It takes practice. Start there with one and two, then go to, go to three and four. Or, I mean, go to two and three, three and four, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, cool? All right, love you guys. See ya.